Hello and welcome to a little bit of a different video today. We will be reacting and summarize a live stream of Helper Wings, which they did on their Instagram page yesterday. We're working throughout the night to cut everything together. And well, these <laughs> are my notes. There were a lot of things that they talked about. And um, we will start off with some broader topics they uh, talked about and then later we will go into some specifics about models that were asked about and that they actually also had some very interesting answers to. A quick thing to say about the live stream itself, um, Herpa was so great to do it bilingual, so um, they had uh, questions answered both in German and in English, so kudos for Herpa for doing that, that's awesome. Um, most of the um, answers we will hear here are in English, there will be a few in German. The reason for me to include some of the German answers is simply because they were sometimes a little bit more comprehensive. Um, but don't worry, I will guide you through those. Also, uh, this time Halpa actually um, saved the live stream, so they are available in full length on their Instagram page and I will link to them in the uh, description below in case you would like to see the original entire stream, um, then just follow the link down below. Um, and then you can check it out there. All right, so the first topic that we will um, talk about and listen uh, to what they had to say is about GSE. Um, there were some questions about that and this is one of the answers. It was especially about cargo accessories. Um, we are doing something new, we are developing something right now um, for a very specific cargo aircraft. We hope that will be finished uh, still this year that we have it on the market and um, it would just be interesting to know exactly what kind of accessories you are missing. If it's if it's something that we haven't produced in a long time, I think one question was, for example, for, for, for the sky train that we had a couple of years back, um, or if there are any new things that we haven't even touched or, or designed before. That's something that uh, we would like to hear about. Definitely. All right, so they actually did have two parts where they were talking about GC. This was the first part. Unfortunately, the second one, um, it sounded like they were going to mention a few more things, but then the live feed cut and they never recovered from that. They never uh, took up that topic again, unfortunately. But there were actually uh, two really important informations here in this little clip. The first thing is actually that he says that they are working on um, some form of GC, some cargo load or something for a special plane. Now, what could that be? They didn't say. And I'm now entirely speculating, but I would say they're working on some form of cargo loader for the Beluga. I think that makes a lot of sense because the Beluga is about to be released. Beluga XL, I should say. Um, and it would just make sense that they would make some GC that would work around that aircraft. The other thing that they said is then that they are interested in hearing from the community what GC they should do. Now, in my world, that sounds like, please send us emails with ideas. So um, go ahead, send them emails with ideas for what they could do as a GSE. Why not? The next topic uh, that came up was about the uh, box design. I mean, I've said many times that I find the new box design to be <laughs> rather dreadful. Um, I know there are many others out there that don't like it either. Um, but they did talk about it, and so let's see what they actually said about it, what maybe their reasonings are behind the new box design. Let's check it out. Um, the question was about the packaging, if we would uh, change the packaging again back to the old design, um, that is a definite no. All right, so straight away <laughs> they're saying they won't change back, that's obviously... I mean, I, I don't know if it's so much a wish for them to change back to the original design, but they won't do that, unfortunate. They could, of course, explore different um, options, um, but let's see if they say more about that. We do want to just stick with the packaging. It does have advantages. Um, the reason for the old packaging design was um, back 15 years ago, nobody had a real good internet connection, if any internet connection at all. And it was more of a, more of a, like a comparison. You could, you could compare the the model you're holding in your hand with the with the actual aircraft, um, it was um, it was supposed to help uh, recognize the model when it's in the stores and the shelves. Um, but the smaller the package it gets, it's, the more difficult it is to get a clear picture. Sometimes it's too dark, sometimes it's too light. Um, you don't get a good angle at uh, for the for the image, 
And also, we have been experiencing over the past years more and more trouble with the airline themselves that they were very picky about the... All right, so <laughs> I just have to jump in here because firstly, he says that one of the reasons they originally added pictures was because, um, well, the internet wasn't as developed as it is today. Uh, so it was a, a way for customers to see what they were getting. Um, and sure, you could say it like this. This might have been the real intention for Harper, um, other than having a nice looking box. But we do have plenty of examples where Harper has put the wrong plane in the picture to the actual model. So if that's the logic, then you failed at that as well. So honestly speaking, I'm not fully buying that explanation. Um, at least I don't think it's a very good explanation as to why they uh, wouldn't do those kind of boxes anymore. But of course, then they do talk about some other reasons. And I do think that's a much more um, valid point, And that's that they have had a lot of issues with airlines. For example, when adding a picture of an Emirates and there would be a tail of a Lufthansa in the background, the airline would say, no, we don't like that. That's a fair point. And I can fully see that that, ha that could have added a lot of workload to the process of making these boxes. But I would still argue, even if they don't add pictures anymore, which is fine, just leave them away. There are still better options than what they're doing today. Instead of just having the second cutout on the backside, why not do what, for example, your competition is doing? Add a graphic, a graphic representation, a rendition of the aircraft on the box. There are so many other options that are so much easier and make the box look so much better than what you're doing currently. And we just thought, you know, why not just simply uh, put, put our focus on actually what we're selling and we're actually selling the model, not the picture. And that's why we added the second picture on the back and then everybody can clearly see what they're getting. Um, it's also good for new customers who um, do not know Herpa. They're actually, um, I just mentioned that probably a lot of people out there who've never heard of Herpa before. I think we're not the biggest company out there in the world and everybody needs to know us, would be nice. Okay, I mean, <laughs> sure, he has a point that there are people out there that don't know Herpa, but if you are buying a plain model, it doesn't matter if you know the brand or not. You have an idea what you're buying. I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, but I don't buy the, the argument that if you can't see that inside the box there is a model, you wouldn't know that you're buying a model. I find that a little bit weak. Um, but then everybody knows exactly what they're getting. Um, also our, our customers, our collectors can check in store. Um, are all the tires on the model where they're supposed to be? Is there any damage? and all that without having to open the box. And I think that's good from a collector standpoint. Um, and also retailers, we get feedback that retailers also not like everybody ripping open the boxes all the time. If, if there wasn't any issue with your product, people wouldn't need to always check your product before buying it. So we are, we're coming back to the point, if you have to make a box where people can see the product before buying it because they don't trust that the quality of the product is to the level that it should be, then you're doing something wrong. And in any case, even though I can see the model in the box, I cannot see if it's damaged. I cannot see if the wing is loose. I will only be able to see that the moment I take it out of the box. Yes, I can see if maybe a wheel is loose, but I still have to check all these other parts because, yeah. And then he mentions that there were retailers that were complaining to Harper about customers taking the model out of the box to check it. Obviously, when he says it like this, I have to believe him that this is the case. Me as a customer, I can only say that I have experienced the complete opposite. I have never experienced a shop where I was not allowed to take the model out of the box. I have even on multiple occasions experienced the retailer actually asking me to make sure that I take the model out of the box and check it before buying it. The next point then was about pricing. Now, uh, for anyone who has been collecting Herpa for the last few years, they might have noticed that the prices have gone up quite a bit, especially in 2020. The prices did also spike at the same time where quality of their product really took a nosedive. And that's really not a good sell. But let's hear what they have to say 
about their pricing policy. Then comes the question after the prices that they changed. Yes. So this is um, always ugly. So he, he, he got the question about the pricing. He says it's always um, they're not happy about having to raise prices. Um, he says that they managed to keep a price stable since 2016, but they have experienced rising costs in production. Um, there has been a little bit of also with the licensing, but I think the main hike they've had in, in, in is uh, the, the main hike they've had with their production costs has actually been with shipping. I think he says about seven to nine times more expensive to ship products. And that's obviously, that's a huge thing. He talks about um, how they're even talking with airlines about licensing when airlines want more for the licensing that they say, well, that will have an impact on the price of the product, which might have a negative effect on the, the way customers are viewing that airline. Uh -huh. and now something really interesting comes. All right, so that, that's actually, I'm just going to pause it here. Um, so just quickly summarize again. So yes, they acknowledge that they have had rising prices. They say that they had stable prices from 2016 onwards. Um, but now they just had to raise prices because of exploding costs in some in production a little bit in licensing but mainly in shipping and i think shipping is definitely something that that really is underestimated and i'm fully including myself here that that's definitely a point that i have never really thought about when i've been criticizing their prices but and i think that's um a good thing then um what they're mentioning now is they say, yes, we have raised prices, but we are committed to then also offer more detailing. Okay, so March, April releases will already have more detailing. So that's awesome. All right, so, okay, that's, that's really cool information here. Um, so March, April releases, those should be the first ones with additional detailing. Um, and they're taking some of the detailing that you would find on the Wings Club model. So um, uh, I think it's the static ports. Don't. <laughs> there are some additional detailing, I think, around the cockpit section, and there will be some more details um, on the engine cells. I believe that's probably some of the safety markings we have seen um, on aircraft. So that's really cool. And this will be standard from now on. All right, so those were some of the more broader topics that were uh, touched upon. Then there were a ton of questions about specific models. Um, I have picked out a few of um, the uh, answers from Happer Wings and the rest. Well, I have them right here and we will go through them as well. But first, let's listen to what they have to say. Um, just the first question was about, was about the KC-135, if we have any plans for that. Um, we do not. Um, we do have the KC-10, um, as many people, or most people probably already saw in the May and June releases. Um, we will actually not go back in history, but we, we do want to do more refueling tankers, but if we continue, it will be more down the road, the A330, the KC-46, um, looking more into the future. All right, so um, I'm sure anyone who uh, knows something about military aircraft will be able to determine more from that. So they are, they are looking more to the what's the future instead of uh, into the past. Personally, I would always prefer that, um, but it, it looks like there will be coming some more military aircraft in the future, um, so I guess that's good news. On Eurowings, yeah. Um, schwierig wird es nur, was es von Eurowings neu geben wird. Es gibt da sehr viel Bewegung im Konzern. Welche Flugzeugtypen bleiben? Ist ja, glaube ich, grundsätzlich einfach ein Thema. Right. So, um, just to quickly summarize what he said there. Uh, the question obviously was about Eurowings. 
And well, the short answer is yes, there will be coming more models of Eurowings, but at the moment, because of, well, current events uh, and some uh, restructuring of Eurowings within the Lufthansa Group, it is rather difficult to determine which aircraft types will remain in the Eurowings fleet. And because of that, it is difficult to right now decide which model to make. There were also some people asking about Eurowings 737-800 and that's a definite no. There, there were like five of them in the Eurowings fleet and they were all leased. Um, so they're all leaving the fleet at the moment um, and models like this HEPA never does. So yeah, that's anyone who wanted that, you will probably have to look for it either in a different scale if that's available or as a custom. Then the next um, thing that was also asked about was uh, Czech Airlines or uh, CSA. Um, and they had something interesting to say about that as well. So let's listen to it. Uh, the question was about if we have more CSA models planned. And uh, we basically do. We just we, or just finished the 8320 in the revised delivery. That will be available this month. We will start distribution now, next, I think next week. And uh, we are planning further models of CSA, but we will have to check a bit about you know, the types, um, which will be, which will remain in the fleet for the, for the uh, next couple of months and, and, and years. Um, focus is more on the 8220 at the moment at CSA. They have a couple of them ordered, and um, we hope to get some information from the airline soon so we can get more things started. All right. So, um... Sounds like we could expect an A220 JSR model at some point in the future. I'd say that's not a bad model to get. Then, of course, there were a lot of questions regarding EasyJet and Ryanair, a classicer. Um, so let's see what they say this time. Ganz viele Fragen kamen auch schon rein zu Ryanair und zu EasyJet. Vielleicht kannst du da mal was ja. dazu sagen. Mittlerweile klassischen Fragen. Genau. Um, leider kann ich nichts Neues vermelden. Um, so right away he's saying right now no news and no communication with the companies. Muss man leider so sagen, viele neue Kontakte. Ich habe gerade bei Ryanair vier neue Kontakte. All right, so they apparently have new contacts with Ryanair, but they're not answering at the moment. Intern Aussage dafür, dass sie mal zuständig wären. Fakt ist aber einfach, diese Fluggesellschaften sind auch so straff organisiert, wir haben so häufig zu Antworten bekommen. Leute, es ist, äh, wir, wir machen unser Business, wir haben keine Zeit für euer Anliegen und äh, es, es bringt uns nichts. Selbst wenn wir anbieten, äh, wir haben... Okay, so er spricht über, sie haben wirklich versucht, sie in Kontakt mit ihnen zu kommen, die Kompanien sind nicht interessiert. Sie haben sogar versucht, ihnen bessere Deals zu bieten, in Form von Lizenzen und sie sind immer noch nicht interessiert. 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 Sie sind immer noch nicht but I mean, at least he's now for the first time they're acknowledging that yes, these models would just sell like crazy and they really would like to do them, but they can't without the license. So, um, right, so, um, yeah, it's unfortunate, obviously. I think everyone would be really happy if they could make EasyJet and Ryanair models, um, but without license, it's not possible. Um, what is positive, I think, about this answer is that firstly, they have acknowledged that they have also tried to give them better deals and the airline still said no, so uh, you can't blame HAPA for that. Um, and what I also really like is that they really acknowledge now that they know that these models would sell really well because, I mean, this seemed so obvious, but HAPA never really, they never really mentioned it, they never really talked about it. Um, so the fact that they actually talk about it now, I think, is a is a good thing, even though, of course, they still don't have the license and it doesn't look like they will have it anytime soon. So I guess here also we have to refer to custom models. Then there were a lot of questions regarding Wizz Air and Austrian Airlines, and I think specifically because in the last live stream that HAPA did for their uh, open days last year, they did sound very hopeful that they could get the license both for Wizz Air and for Austrian Airlines. In fact, it sounded like with Wizz Air that they were just, they just needed to sign the papers, everything else was done and then Corona hit and everything was put on ice. Um, and with Austrian Airlines, it sounded like, well, I mean, obviously through Lufthansa at some point that should, that should happen. And honestly speaking, I thought that we would see some Austrian Airlines models right at the beginning of this year. So far, nothing, but let's see what they have to say about these two airlines now, how things have developed 
since the last live stream. Wizzair muss sich halt genauso hinstellen wie, wie bei, bei Ryanair. EasyJet ist auch einer der, der großen, wirklich großen Namen an stark gewachsenen Airlines. Ähm, ich glaube, ich bräuchte mehr in der vier Seite, um auch zu zeigen, wie viele Kontakte. Also eigentlich müsste ich die ganze Verwaltung inzwischen kennen. Alright, so straight away Wizzair, that seems to be not as promising as it sounded last year. That's a bit disappointing. Um, I don't think it's because of uh, a lack of trying from Happowings. He said actually that by now he's pretty much been in touch with everyone <laughs> uh, from, uh, from Wizz Air. Uh, they're working on it. Um, seems like a step backwards from last year, but um, it also does seem like it's not really the fault of Happa. So I guess we just have to be patient. Let's see what they say about Austrian. Austrian ist auch, ähm, ja, glaube ich, glaub ich eher, dass es, dass es mehr an der Pandemie liegt, dass einfach andere Prioritäten right, so einfach vorherrschen. Austrian, they're also in talks, which is great. Um, but they do say again, it's mainly because of the pandemic that, well, the airline is just busy with other things. Again, we just have to accept that that's out of the hands of Herpa and out of the hands of anyone, obviously. But they are preparing some things, trying to prepare some things, um, which is good, I think. Um, I think at the end he said like a time frame towards the next, within the next two years, hopefully, um, hopefully sooner. <laughs> then there were actually also a lot of questions regarding Binter, which is a small Spanish regional carrier, uh, mainly flying in the Canary Islands. Um, but it seems to be a very popular airline. They have a lovely little delivery. Um, seems to have a rather large fan base. So there were quite a few questions regarding that. Let's quickly listen to what they had to say about that. I am um, uh, just thinking about Binter. Um, the question was about if we were going to do Binter also on a 500 scale. We just announced it in 200 scale. We will most probably be doing a Binter ATR 72 in a 500 scale as well. So that's really awesome. So firstly, they have the license because they're just announced, I think I said, uh, a scale 200 model and thinking about doing also an ATR 72 in 500. Uh, might not be under the releases that we have planned for this year, but it's just more a matter of time actually, not a matter of if we're going to do something with more matter of time. All right, so not this year, but in the near future. I mean, that's really positive again, not a question of if but just a question of when. That's good. Um, then we had some uh, news regarding LATAM and other South American and Latin American carriers to see what is coming there. Uh, let's quickly listen to what they had to say about that. The question was about new LATAM models, especially single aisle uh, types. That is something we are looking at. We are looking at more Latin American types. We've done the Aerolinas Argentina 737. Um, or are doing that right now, it's in production. Um, we've done some Mexicana items, but we're we'll doing some things from uh, Mexico and uh, Mexico. Um, so there's more to come, and also LATAM. That's something we'll also be tackling. All right, so more LATAM, more South American in general, and also more single eye stuff. I think that's awesome news for anyone uh, collecting in South America, anyone who has a South American display. Um, I'd say that's definitely exciting news. All right, so those were the um, few bits that I picked out from the live stream, but of course there were many other aircraft models mentioned and I have them right here. So let's very quickly go through uh, at least some of them, um, but obviously for time reasons I won't be able to go through all of these models that were talked about, but um, any models that I haven't mentioned, or in fact all the models that were mentioned in the live stream, I will have a list of every single model that was asked about and what Harper had to say about it in a very brief form. And you will find that list in the video description below. All right, so let's very quickly go through the list. Cargolux 748 with the mask livery that has already been announced, obviously. And he said um, it will be coming out for March, maybe even already in end of February. So do keep an eye out for that. There were a lot of questions regarding the Embraer E2 family and also about a uh, possible Helvetic aircraft model. Um, and what they said here was that they are in advanced talks with Embraer and they do seem to be very cooperative, um, but he couldn't say anything more specific about it. But I would assume that it means that very shortly, um, maybe within the next few months, we can hope to hear something about when we can expect some E2 models at least announced. Then there were quite a few questions regarding 777F 
uh, aircraft, so the freighter version of the 777. Specifically, there had been questions regarding Turkish Airlines. What they said here was that um, perhaps in the future, but right now they're actually working on one or two other Turkish Airlines models before they would think about doing freighters. They were apparently also in talks with DHL regarding a 777F freighter model. Um, but in general, what they said about freighter models was that they would always be coming, but they will always be less of a priority compared to normal packs carrying aircraft. Then they also had a question regarding surprise boxes. Last year for Halloween, Harper did these surprise boxes. I did a video on that. If you would like to see what that looks like, uh, do check it out somewhere here in the top. Um, and they did say, yes, that will also come again. Obviously not every few weeks or every few months, but every now and then they will be repeating that. Then there was a question regarding Marlev, which remains a very popular brand, um, which even surprised Halper. Um, but they acknowledge that it is very popular and um, therefore they will continue to do Marlev models. Obviously not every batch will have one, but every now and then they will do something. Then there were some questions regarding government aircraft. Um, and they did say yes, definitely also in the future. It did, however, sound like they're more going for government aircraft with more elaborate liveries, so not uh, almost entirely white liveries. Um, two models uh, that they did specifically talk about was the Air Force One. They will definitely do the new one as soon as it is known what livery the new one will have. And they did also talk about the uh, Turkish governmental aircraft, the A3-3200, I believe it is, um, as an option for the future. Aegean got a very clear yes, and that's awesome. My speculation to that is that I would very much assume that the first models we see here are A321 and A320 Neos in the new livery. And I would assume that we will at least have an announcement about that in 2021, so this year. Um, but let's see what happens does in the future. Uh, we have uh, a question that was regarding Air Europa, and they did say that Air Europa remained on, um, on, their, on their list, on their focus list. However, uh, obviously Air Europa has been taken over by the IAG, so right now it's a question, what is the future of the brand? If it will um, stay as is, they will make more models of it. If the brand is abandoned, then that's a different question. Then, uh, good news for anyone who likes the Space Shuttle or Buran. Um, although I think the answer was more uh, towards the Space Shuttle. Apparently, they have been checking their tooling for that um, and are working on something, I would assume, not for this year, maybe 2022. Uh, but there could be something new coming there as well. Then for any uh, Middle Eastern fans, uh, Saudia and Royal Jordania was mentioned. More to come. Um, and we could also expect perhaps some single aircraft from these airlines in the future. So that's awesome. And then the final point here on my list was TAP Portugal. And that was a very clear yes. And not just that, you can expect to see an announcement for 0708. So July, August announcements should include a TAP Air Portugal model. That is really exciting news and I would expect, that's again total speculation, I would expect an A321neo, but let's see what they have there. Then I did also specifically ask them about any plans for Australian or Southeast Asian models, but unfortunately they did not answer that question so there were no news regarding any of uh, the airlines that um, operate in that area of the world unfortunately now because the video is getting quite long i think it is time to end the video there were a few other aircraft models mentioned um, but whatever Happer had to say about those and all the aircraft models that we have mentioned here in the video now you can find in the video description below um, in a comprehensive list uh, with that so um, that's all for now. I think there were some really interesting news. Um, I really have to emphasize that I think it's a really good thing that Hapa actually does these live streams now um, and also that they want to do more in the future. It's a great way for them to connect with the community. It's a great way for us to get more information and uh, maybe also catch up on maybe some of the frustrations in the community before it boils over. 
uh, by just getting a simple explanation from Harper. So that's a really good thing. And also, again, I have to say, it's really awesome that they do them bilingual. It's, um, you, you can't expect them to do that, but I think it's really, really awesome that they do uh, do that. So um, respect for that. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you would like to see more content like this in the future, um, when Herpa does the next live stream, we could do another video like this. If you would like to see that, then don't forget to leave a like. That would very much help us out, of course. And if you are new around here, why not hit subscribe? Now with that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you soon again. I'm checking out and bye.